Welcome back to Community Conversations. I'm your host, Steve Mantis, and my guest today is Max Squires. Mac has just written a book called Dynamic Forest, which uh, I've been learning a little bit about, and uh, we have an opportunity to talk about it a little bit more. Cool. Thank you. I enjoy doing this. <laughs> so, you, the last episode uh, segment, you really talked about being influenced by a number of people to try to get your perspective, your message out to a larger audience beyond mm -hmm. the Thunder Bay locality down to decision makers in, in Southern Ontario. Is there something that was key that they should know about that would influence policy and practice here in the North? Yes, definitely. The boreal forest is driven by fire, historically, okay? Some of the fire has been man-caused, majority has probably been naturally caused by lightning. So the species that we have in the boreal forest have adapted to fire. Predam primarily black spruce, jack pine, trembling aspen, and white birch. They are the four species that generally come in after wildfire. They require full sunlight to regenerate well. The only way in nature you're going to get full sunlight is through fire for those species. You can get it through wind throw or insect attack. Not quite the same. Both of those encourage another species, balsam fir, which is a shade lover, or at least it's shade tolerant, we'll say. Okay. So they can survive and grow under standing timber. They can also survive out in bright sunlight. Okay. But the four trees that develop after fire, there's only one that can survive very well in shade, and that's the black spruce, okay? So we got jack pine, trembling aspen, and white birch that require fire to regenerate and grow well. So if you're partial cut, the species you're going to get is the one that can tolerate shade, and that's balsam fir, although white spruce can do similarly. Okay, a lot of the criticism we have of the clear cuts in it is that we're planting monocultures. Well, let's look at fire and nature. The area that I managed here at Thunder Bay for Abitibi Price at the time, 11% of the ground cover of the natural forest was one tree species on a stand of so many hectares. Sometimes it, was both, uh, sometimes it was black spruce, sometimes it was jack pine, sometimes white birch, sometimes trembling aspen. But 11% of the total area. In all my career, in which I've been planting trees, and I've supervised the planting of about 70 million. 70 million. In the, North, uh, the Thunder Bay area. None of those areas are monocultures. We tried to create some in the beginning, but we found we couldn't because the areas that we were planting trees are the richer forest sites. And you've got banks of seed in standing trees in the tops of the trees after you log. You've got it in the humus. And to prepare the ground for planting, pretty well everything you're doing is stimulating the regeneration of those other species. So. Let's say I planted black spruce, I'm also going to get jack pine, I'm also going to get white birch, trembling aspen, some balsam fir, and some white spruce. Because they're regenerating them. naturally. They're all coming in naturally. Right. So you've got more biodiversity in a plantation than you have in a burnt forest, as it turns out. That's biodiversity of trees. And the biodiversity of other things tend to follow the trees because as the trees mature, they pretty well dominate the vegetation, and the vegetation that has naturally occurred with those species are what comes back in. So the, the biodiversity of the plantation is more than the natural forest, as it turns out. Now, we hear that it's more prevalent these days that the ministry takes a position when there's a natural forest fire to let it burn, where before it was always, let's put it out as fast as we can. Does this fit with what you're thinking or? To some extent, yes. I maintain that we should 
tolerate some fire on the landscape, B mainly because there's not much we can do about it. <laughs> <laughs> Except it's, what you can't change. <laughs> it's going to come. The, the conditions are going to be there. But if we're going to utilize the forest for raw material for industry, we only have one real serious choice, and that's clear cut. If we're going to do any form of different cutting where we're going to leave trees standing, we're encouraging balsam fir and white spruce. And if the majority of the forest is of those two main species in time, and we get fire, you've got nothing there that's evolved to regenerate after fire. So we're creating a condition that the forest has not evolved to recover from. Now, there's all these different kind of factors. Like I'm, I'm a big gardener, and okay. I and I have a philosophy that, that you know, the more you put into the soil and you build the soil, you're going to have better, you know, produce coming out. Yes. And I assume it's similar with a forest. Yes. But of course, here we have annual cycles in my in my vegetable garden. In the forest, <laughs> it's a 50 or 60 year cycle. Or a hundred. Or a hundred <laughs> year cycle. So. How much do we really know about that? Like, you know, I'm, I've got 45 years in my mm -hmm. garden in the same patch, I know a bit, but how many 45 mm -hmm. cycles do we have? Oh my gosh. Yes. Well, you remember what I talked about in Newfoundland, the repeated cuts. It's very interesting that the yield of the second clear cut in pretty well all those instances has been higher. And that's on Newfoundland's poor soil. Uh, is the same happening here? Well, uh, I'll talk about one particular plantation. And we only have a minute left, Mac. One plantation, 29 years old, it already had as much wood, standing wood, as the average that Abitibi has logged historically in Thunder Bay at about 100 and 100 plus years. So uh, if the soil has deteriorated for after the first rotation, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that doesn't seem to prove it. Right, and, and it's, you know, for me, as I mentioned, it's, you know, I got 45 rotations now, yes. uh, but we just don't know. We haven't been studying the That's forest right. for that length of time. And so uh, quickly, we got a couple, 10 seconds left. Where can people find your book? They can find it at Chapters. Uh, they can find it online through uh, Dundurn, uh, Amazon, uh, Indigo. So it's available at uh, bookstores. Mac, thanks so much for joining me. Uh, if you're interested, go out and get a copy of his book. Uh, in the meantime, please stay safe, and we'll see you again next week.